World Wide Web. What's up? Welcome back to the stream. My name's James. I'm a product designer and in this stream I'm working on the design for the Live Drum Machine, which is a working title for a hardware drum synthesizer, sampler, that kind of thing. Um, and it looks something like this currently. Uh, I'm here in SOLIDWORKS, we're doing the mechanical design, uh, industrial design of this hardware device, which you'll be able to play and make cool drum beats. Uh, so if that's something you're interested, um, or if you're interested in designing tech devices or music tech stuff specifically, then you're in the right place. Um, on the last stream, I did a couple of things. I put in some screws into these screw bosses to hold everything in place. And I added some screw bosses to attach the actual uh, enclosure bottom part uh, onto the enclosure top part, which uh, if I toggle the transparency, um, should look something like this. I can change these to being opaque again. Um, none of those parts should actually be transparent, they were just set like that, so it makes a bit more sense. Uh, but yeah, this is kind of what it's looking like now. And we've got some screws holding things together. There will probably be a lot more screws. Uh, these are just kind of placeholders for now. Once I know where all the buttons and knobs and things are going to be, then I'll be able to figure out where we need screws to keep everything nicely supported. And... Um, yeah, then I can place them all in. And I think screws is a good topic to start with today because at the moment I've got only a few things on my sketchy little handwritten list here. I've got low profile screws and grip. So those two things are what I want to tackle today. Um, so what I mean by low profile screws, if you look at this screw, uh, if you look at it from the side, um, so if we measure from here to the bottom of the screw, it's about 2.35 millimeters tall. Uh, and that's not too bad, but probably, you know, I'm trying to keep the overall height of this device as, excuse me, uh, as low as possible. So, um, so I, yeah, I, I want to try to reduce that. Um, I want to have grip on the bottom, some kind of like rubber pads to keep the, the device from sliding around on your table, but I don't want them to be huge because that makes the device taller. And I talked about this on the last stream, there would be the option to countersink these screws so the screw head is actually flush with the metal. Um, though in the interest of trying to keep costs low and keep complexity low, uh, I think I want to avoid that because countersinking holes is an extra process and every extra process takes time and money and it's something to remember to do. So um, I think I'm just going to try to use smaller screws and I had a look on McMaster Car yesterday uh, which is a, an online screw retailer and I downloaded some 3D models of some different screws here so I'll just open them up and we can talk about the different types of screws that I found. Um, so what I know from the assembly is that uh, I want I want to try to use one type of screw if possible. The less different types of parts we have, uh, the simpler things are. It means there's less things you need to remember to order when you're manufacturing. Um, it's less complication for... I just realized my music is still running. Um, hopefully that wasn't too loud. Uh, yeah, so it's um, less complication for whoever is assembling to remember which screws they need to use where. Uh, if all the screws are the same, that's much simpler. 
And same thing with right to repair. If you're going to disassemble the device, try to repair something, uh, it's much easier to remember where each screw goes if all the screws are the same. Um, and it's also cheaper to buy screws in bulk if they're all the same, you know? So <laughs> there's a lot of reasons to do that. Although, you know, if we really need a different screw, then we need a different screw. So I can do that. Um, the shorter screw here is five, uh, needs to be five millimeters. Could potentially be a bit longer, but we would start to get into trouble with how far it can fit into this um, standoff. So I'm keeping the length to five millimeters for now. Um, and if you minus 1.6, then you get 3.4 millimeters into the thread. So hopefully that's enough. Usually they say you should at least have the thread size uh, as the engaged amount of thread. So an M3, you should at least have three millimeters of screw thread attached. And we should have 3.4 technically, give or take a little bit. Uh, yo, Elk, what's up, man? I missed you on the stream yesterday. <laughs> but, um, you know, I can't ask for too much. I'm always grateful to have you around. And most of the time you're always here. So it's awesome to have you back. How are you going? Um, right now I'm just talking about screws. And I'm going to explain why I've chosen a certain type of screw. So long story short, what I just discussed is that I want one M3 screw, which is five millimeters long. That's kind of my constraint for now. Uh, latest I've slept in for years. Right, what time is it? I have some... Uh, some clocks from different regions on my phone, but uh, on the East Coast, no, West Coast, Los Angeles, 11.20. What's the time difference between East and West? I mean, yesterday, ah, I slept until almost 10. Ah, yeah, fair. Yeah, I was streaming pretty early yesterday, so, you know, no, no stress. I'm usually up around 7 a.m. Early starter. That's pretty good for, um, you know, for a, a home worker. Home hobbyist, maybe, I should say. <laughs> All right, so here's what I'm thinking with screws at the moment. So I, I mentioned I want low profile, not only to save height on the bottom of the device, but also to save height inside the device. So this is the screw that holds the Raspberry Pi in and it's got like 0 0.05 of a millimeter gap to the bottom of the enclosure, which is a little bit too tight. So I want to make that a bit flatter as well. Uh, it was 8 a.m. when you streamed. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yesterday I wanted to do some stuff later in the afternoon, so I did a kind of midday-ish stream. All right, so I found on McMaster car this screw, which is called low profile. They also have ultra low profile, but the ultra low profile screws are like $6 each, which is way too expensive. Whereas these ones are about $9.50 or $10 for $100. So, and they're also stainless steel, which is corrosion resistant. You know, they don't get stuck in devices when the device starts rusting or something. So stainless steel is ideal. And the head is two millimeters. And the other screw that I had in there currently is 2.35. So this is a little bit better, but we could do more. Um, I just open up this screw model. So yeah, this one is very dark. Let me just brighten up the scene a little bit. Uh, 
Hello. There we go. Um, this one is, as I said before, uh, 2.354 millimeters or 2.35 roughly. And it has a Phillips head. Now I've never been entirely sure what my opinion on this is until yesterday. I think yesterday I've made my final decision on what type of screw head I prefer. I'll explain. So this is Phillips head. This one is a hex head. So it's a little bit more low profile. Then we've got um, this one here, which is a button head Torx. So that one is 1.65 millimeters. So this is winning so far. This is, even though it's called a button head, it's even more low profile than the low profile head. And it has a Torx bit uh, make it really inconvenient with the TriStar <laughs> and D10. No, so um, I mentioned before, like, I, I want to use all the same screws if possible on the device, mostly because of simplicity for assembly, um, simpl simplicity for ordering parts, and for cost reasons, like buying in bulk, it's cheaper, but also right, f right to repair, like um, when somebody is fixing their device it's much nicer when there's only one type of screw and they can't mess it up they can't accidentally put the wrong one in the wrong place and yeah for right to repair i also want to make <laughs> the screws use a bit that is readily available to people um so yeah this is it talks button head screw and this is a button head with a hex um a hex bit, I guess, and it's also 1.65 millimeters. So, definitely prefer star shape, like on screen. What do you mean on screen? I oh, like the one I had on the screen, yeah. So, hex, let, let's talk about it like this. So, this is probably the most common head, Phillips head, and um, it's a lot of the time the cheapest, but that's starting to change now. Um, and actually if I wanted to get a hundred of these, it would cost me like six US dollars for a 100. Now the problem with Phillips head is you get something called, um, cam out. So when you turn too strong, the, the screwdriver wants to lift up and turn like it, it forces the screwdriver out and it means you have to push really hard um, while you're screwing to turn it so that it doesn't strip yeah it strips relatively easy exactly and supposedly this was done by design in the beginning um, because it would mean that machinists and engineers wouldn't accidentally over torque the screws so you would fail by slipping out um, which I don't know, maybe that seemed like a good idea at the time, but yeah, it ends up ruining the top of the screw and often ruining the top, ruining the bit or the screwdriver as well. And we have different ways to prevent over torquing screws now, like with clutches on a drill or using a, a torque gauge or a torque um, driver or something where you can set the actual torque, what it should be, and it'll just clutch after that. Um, the average user has gorilla strength. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you shouldn't need to use gorilla strength to screw them in and, um, you shouldn't be able to risk damaging the screw or damaging your tools. So, uh, what kind of screwdrivers do you use if your tip breaks on a screw? What kind of screwdrivers do you use if your tip breaks on a screw? Uh, th thanks for joining, by the way, Bo. I'll just call you Bo. Um, or was it meant to be like a bowl mate? 
<laughs> I don't know. Uh, if the tip breaks, I don't know. It's a tough question. You kind of, most of the time, you're fucked if the tip breaks. Um, so generally, I would have preferred in the past a hex because hex, uh, you know, hex is like when when once you've got the bit in, you can turn it and it doesn't talk out. It doesn't like it just holds itself in. You don't have to hold force pushing against the screw while you're also turning it. Uh, it sort of just fits in there. But sometimes if the, no, that's where your tools break. <laughs> in a hex, you mean? Well, yeah, so what I was gonna say is sometimes, um, sometimes the, if the tool doesn't fit perfectly into a hex head screw, then it, rotates and yeah it rounds so either the screw rounds out or the the hex bit rounds out um because the angle that it's it's rotating at like if you imagine this circle this circle here is the angle that i mean that it's turning so you're putting force in this direction and there's not really a hard surface against it uh i have back outs you drill back into the screw and then reverse it so, I mean, with all these things considered, I personally think that the Torx is the best way to go. And actually, so I mentioned this screw was about 10 bucks for 100. Um, the ultra low profile is like six bucks for one. Um, these are about six bucks for a hundred. These are also about five bucks for a hundred. And strangely enough, this might just be a McMaster cast thing, but Torx, Torx bit screws are like four or four fifty for a hundred for this size. So it's both the best value, and in my opinion, the the most robust um, bit for not damaging your tools, not damaging the screws. And I would say that it's common enough that if people have a screwdriver set with different bits, they should have a Torx screw bit. Um, I don't want to like make it difficult for people to disassemble. Uh, Torx is the strongest setup. You can also use Phillips to back it out. You mean use a Phillips in a Torx head? Um, the other option is, what can I, uh, screwdriver bit types. There's another one, I forget what its name is, but it's basically like a square, like this kind of shape. I forget what it's called. <laughs> I don't think that's the name. Um, very low quality image. Can I get a labeled image? I guess not. Anyone help me out here? What are the square bit, square bits called? Robertson, that's it. Yeah, so Robertson is also like, I would say pretty robust. Uh, and you can get these hybrid, like combination Phillips head and Robertson, Robertson heads. But the Robertson bits are like not that common, I would say. So I think all things considered, Torx is probably the way to go. It's the least likely to, to break. Happens to be the cheapest. Um, it's common enough for people to have tools to repair and um, yeah, I think it's I think it's the way to go. What kind of deck are we building here? <laughs> We're actually building a 
Um, a hardware a drum machine. So all these screws that I've got in here are Phillips head screws and they're not low profile and I want to replace them all with something a bit more low profile and I think we're going to go with Torx. So yeah, 2.35 millimeters versus um, 1.65. So I think that's the way to go. <clears throat> and I downloaded all these different variations of the screws. Um, too much engineer stuff. <laughs> Do you want me to work on a deck instead? I don't know how much CAD work a deck would need, but... Um, yeah, this model is actually pretty nice. I think I'll stick with this. I'm a 3D artist in game development myself. Oh, cool. Um, I actually have a friend doing similar kind of stuff. Like he's working for Blizzard as a, a dungeon designer. <laughs> 3D artist in game design, uh, game development. What what do you, what's your specialty? Actually, uh, Elk, maybe this is a good, another good person to talk to. Elk was mentioning that he's interested in trying some game dev type stuff, not so much making fully fledged games, but kind of making some rendered diorama type stuff. Uh, I'm going to close all these other parts. And I might even close this because I want to try to organize this folder a little bit. If it will let me now that I've opened that file. Uh, hard surface modeling becoming easier, so I jumped into sculpting and character development. Ah, okay, cool. You don't need to respond to that. <laughs> Uh, in my party of three, started a game project a week ago. Oh, sick. That sounds cool. Uh, what kind of game? Okay, so we want... Um, I want to write... M3 by by 5... Talks, or maybe I'll also write button head. Some people call it a lens head as well, but this actually says button head on it, so I'm going to go with that name. Um, yeah, what sort of game? I second that. By the way, I think um, I see that you're watching on Kick, and I think. Um, the Twitch messages probably don't come through on Kick, but they do come through on stream. Uh, so, yeah, he might not be able to see unless he's w watching the messages come up on the screen. Kick, to be honest, has a pretty bad integration with Restream. I see them on the stream. Yeah, cool. Nice, nice. Okay, how's my planes and stuff on here? Not too bad. Uh, I've been reaching, researching a bit about cameras and a man kind of stuck in between Sony A6400 and the Lumix S5 II. Oh, cool. More leaning to Lumix. Okay. Lumix is micro four thirds or, um, sorry, can't tell much, but it's got some inspiration from Binding of Isaac and Hades. 
Okay. Is that a game or is that like a... Um, it sounds like some old Greek fable or something. <laughs> I don't want to know if I want to mess with this model much. I just leave it as it is. Games, yes, okay. Um, all right, I'm gonna check that camera in a second, Elk. I'm just gonna first. Uh, figure out what I want to do with this screw. I think I'll just start. Hmm, I wonder if I can re get away with replacing all of these. Is this your day job modeling nuts? <laughs> uh, not exactly. Um, Hades is actually a rogue light centered around Greek myth. Uh, he's a product designer. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I used to do a lot more of this stuff as a day job, but at the moment I'm doing more like user experience related stuff. Okay. I want to see if I can replace this screw, replace components. Let's see if I can get away with this. <laughs> Ding dong. Maybe not. Well, can I rotate this please? Let me rotate this. What the hell is going on? <laughs> nice seeing you, but I'd, if I see one more screw, I'm a flip. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm sorry, but I need to figure out some screw stuff right now. Take this. Um, all right, that didn't work. Let me try it again. Ding dong. SolidWorks, why are you going to do me like this? Like it wants me to choose this face, I'm choosing it. Mate is inactive because it's between... What? Like, it's looking at the wrong window, you know. Oh my god, this is so stupid. What are you doing? Okay, SolidWorks for an industry standard program. You got some problems. <laughs> I 
a bullet. I'm out of here. Okay, let me try again. Um, so tell me, Elk, the Lumix camera versus the, versus the, um, Sony, pretty sure from memory, the 6400 is a micro fourth, no, not a micro four thirds, an APS-C, um, sensor. Do you know what size sensor the Lumix has? Because I thought Lumix have generally... Uh, micro four thirds sensors, which are a bit smaller. Wait, no, that's not what I want. go it says full frame mm. Okay, I need these two to flip around. Can this give me some more options? Uh, unlimited 4K 60 FPS recording. Okay, yeah, that's pretty decent. Yeah, full frame, 24.2 megapixel. Yeah, that's similar to what my camera has. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Um, what are the range of lenses like? Uh, God, this is so annoying. Why can't it just like actually? Ah, maybe I can do it here. Okay, so this one should be. done it I think okay now can I make it like do that for all instances no 
Why didn't I do it for all of them? God damn it. I managed to change one screw, but one screw only. Uh, they have over a hundred lenses. Okay, that's decent. They offer a 20 to 60 mil lens for 2300 f f 2.8 I guess uh, I can get the standard 35 mil and the 20 to 60 for around 2600 or I can wait for Nikon to drop their new flagship so I can buy the 8th gen for cheap you do you mean the Nikon lens or the Nikon camera this is my this is just my opinion right you can take it or leave it but in my opinion Nikon is dust <laughs> I think Nikon have been left behind years ago but um, Lumix is alright though let me check this camera you were talking about um, Lumix S5 II and Sony 6400 A6400 so yeah this is the one with the flip up screen 4k oh, this is in German great No Deutschland. Where's US? The hell? Let's do Australia. And it's gone. It's a fucking shitty website. <laughs> Function list. Technische Daten. 24 megapixel APS-C. Okay, okay, okay. Um, what am I missing here? Nikon is smoking everyone in video, really? 8K at 60 FPS, 4K at 120 FPS, unlimited. I don't know, I need to see some, some data behind that. Is there no Lumix site? Oh, Lumix is Panasonic, right? God, I'm sick of getting German websites. This is something you don't realize when you live in, like you don't think about this moving to Germany, but every time you look something up on the internet, it's like sometimes it's impossible to get it in English. It's like not everyone that lives here is German, you know? Can you just... Can you give me the option to choose if I want German? Uh, 35 mil full frame, 24 megapixels. Uh, this browser doesn't automatically translate either. And can you make it so when you change the language, it goes back to the f product?
My scroll wheel is going to drive me insane as well. Keeps going up when I'm trying to scroll down. Very agitated. Um, 14 stops of latitude. I think you mean dynamic range. Video compression. XAVC is pretty nice. Um, that's what I normally use. Um, noise reduction up to 100,000 ISO. What's the ISO like on this beast? Um, I like the Lumix because I can load my LUTs into the camera or preview or record with a LUT. I think you can do that with the Sony. At least you can change color profiles on the Sony. I'm not sure if um, if you can load a LUT or not, but it has kind of its own color profiles and you can do like Sony S-Log and stuff. So. Uh, Where's the ISO? Okay, good sensitivity. <laughs> Pretty decent. Word is that Panasonic has far better color rendering than Sony. Yeah, I don't know. Like Sony often gets praised for the the color rendering. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't been keeping up enough, I don't think. Right, how can I make it so when I replace one of these screws, it does it for all of them? Uh, I needed to do that, okay. So let's undo. Now the mates are broken. Fantastic, good work, solid works. Third time's a charm. I know next to nothing about current camera tech. I'm shopping for features. Lumix has the best deal I've found that satisfies my requirement and much more. So I guess um, I'm trying to think like I have to check my biases. Like why why am I so in the Sony camp? I think partially like I can't ignore the fact that my dad had a Sony camera before me. I used to have Canon. Like I had the 600D, which I think was called the T3i, T, what is it? TR3 Rebel or something? I don't know. I can't remember what it's called in the US. Um, but, uh, okay, so just need to remember to do this. Um, Sony, the reason why I went to Sony is because at the time they were only, the only mirrorless uh, full frame camera. Hello? Where is... Like, why does it minimize everything when... when I do this? Place components. Sorry, I will get back to talking about the cameras. I'm just trying to stop myself from having a mental breakdown about this screw. I'm 
Okay. Now, give me the chance to fix the mates. What are you doing? It's going to ask me for every single one. Okay, let's see. Let's see if I can fix this. Solid works. What is this? Okay. Um, I know next to nothing. Uh, yeah. So I shot on Olympus 35 and DSLR with both Nikon and Canon. I haven't used Sony before outside of audio and gaming. Um, and the TVs are awesome as well. I have Panasonic laptop and that's about it. Well, I do look at, I do like the look of the Lumix and my buddy loves his Lumix. Yeah, I've heard good things about Lumix. So yeah, like I said, in the beginning, what drew me to Sony was they were the only um, mirrorless cam camera with a full frame lens. Uh, and at the time I was like, you know, all the, all the Lumix cameras and the, um, and other brands were using micro four thirds um, sensors and also like the lenses. So basically in the mirrorless camera world, all the lenses outside of Sony were interchangeable with other brands. Like every other brand could interchange lenses with each other. So I was like, that's really awesome. Like being able to use a lens from one brand on another brand and they're all interchangeable is sweet but that was only with the micro four third sensors, which, you know, <clears throat> uh, they're obviously a lot more limited than a full frame sensor. And at the time my dad had a Sony, not the full frame one. And I was like, you know what? I want full frame. I want like that, the nice full frame look. So I'll go to Sony and he had some lenses that I could share with him. So. That was pretty cool. Although most of his lenses weren't full frame. So kind of went into it on my own anyway. And my dad ended up following me. He ended up swapping for a full frame one. Um, but yeah, like at the time it was, uh, yeah, it was a really good full frame camera with good colors. Uh, could shoot video, although it was this is the A7 II, it was limited to 30 minutes of video recording or something. I put a hacked firmware on there that was, um, that was, uh, it would allow you to unlock the record limit, which I never had any problems with, like it never overheated or anything. So it was sweet. And now like the new cameras from Sony are looking awesome. Like they're going to release a Sony A7S 4 soon, which is the more video focused one. The S3, like the the last video focused one, only had a 12 megapixel sensor, which is fine because that's more than enough for like 4K and stuff. But it would mean that I would be dropping from 24 megapixels to 12 megapixels. So I wouldn't be able to use it as much for like photography and stuff. But now that this new one's coming out and it's, um, and it's 20, no, I think it's like 32 megapixels and it's full frame and it shoots. I don't think it does six. Uh, I don't think it does 8k at all, which I actually think makes a lot of sense. It does 4k 120 frames per second. And it does 6K 
well, this is rumors because it hasn't released yet. It's supposedly going to do 6K at 60 frames per second um, in 10-bit color. And um, yeah, I'm not sure what format, but yeah, flagship Sony's there. They are expensive, yeah. Um, 10-bit color is another thing to look for. I don't know if if they mention that. But so, like, resolution and frame rate is one thing. Um, for me, like, 4K 60 is more than enough. Although 4K 120 would be sick. But I shoot mostly uh, 1080p 60. Um, Lumix is 10-bit. Nikon is 12. Really? I'll have to look into it. Show me, show me what the model is, because that's interesting. Because last I checked, Nikon were like making cameras that barely competed with the Sony cameras from like 10 years ago. But things might have must have changed drastically, I guess. Stand by. <laughs> All right. Fourth time's a charm. Can I actually replace this screw? We're only 54 minutes into the stream, trying to do this. Uh, let's see. Like, SolidWorks, what? <laughs> Whoever programmed this shit? What made you think that showing me this now is good when I have to minimize this and change back to this to actually do what I need to do? It's insane. Um... This is also so annoying. Where did it go? Is it here? Is this the right screw? No idea. No, that wasn't the right screw. <laughs> and I pressed cancel, like I didn't want to do it, and still it changed them all. This fucking program. Don't do this. Don't do this. And don't do this. The fucking... Oh my god. Alright, let me check this camera. Ah, okay, so this is like the big dog. Z9, unstoppable. So this would probably be the equivalent to like the Can the Sony um, S9 or something. Uh... 
Okay, so 4K 120. Um, so 120 is the highest frame rate. And 8K 30. See, this is weird to me, like, if they do 4K 120, why don't they do 8K 60? And 1080p 240. Uh, it's crazy to see how much the technology has progressed. Yeah, see, like, if you look up uh, Sony A7S three prefer to record at 24 it's a different vibe I guess um, show me the fucking German website again So even though in this browser I'm already I already have the page open on the Australia version it opens up again the German one like it doesn't remember your preferences or anything so annoying dude I'm so pissed off today <laughs> I'm struggling I think I need to sleep Uh, what are the record options here? So you get 4K at 30. God, this is laid out so bad. 4K and 1080p 120. I thought this did 4K 60. Ah, oh, that's the A7 III. A7S3 um, Offers a lot of bang for buck I mean if you're looking in the full frame range range ha So how much does the Lumix cost? Because th this I think would be the comparison And this page doesn't even show you what it records. So annoying. Oh, 2600 with two lenses. Yeah, that's pretty good. How much is this? Yeah, this is like 5,000. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. These websites are pissing me off. SolidWorks is pissing me off. <laughs> Can I just replace this goddamn component? This needs to go away. This needs to be here. Um. This needs to be that face, and I need to see where the screw goes when I click it. 
Okay, it's here. Good. This needs to be this face. So I guess this should be the front plane. And that needs to flip. No. This needs to flip. Maybe actually change that to this one. Kind of just like do that for all instances. You should make some music. <laughs> uh, thought it was pretty reasonable. It's still really freaking expensive. Yeah. Why is this shit gotta be so annoying? Show me even what screw I'm looking at. And then it just fucks off over here. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to delete all these fucking screws. And I'm going to put them all in again. It's actually going to be easier. <laughs> Do 
Yeah, but you drank too much coffee and manipulating samples of waterfalls. <laughs> what? <laughs> Is that a joke or I don't get what's going on? But all good. I'm so angry. I'm filled with rage right now. Eat a Snickers. <laughs> and I'm so angry at Desalt Systems, who make SolidWorks. I'm so angry at Logitech for making this shitty mouse with a scroll wheel goes backwards and I'm so angry at every retailer's website for defaulting to German just because I'm located in Germany I don't speak German okay you have all of my cookies and data from four years of web browsing where I've never once chosen to look at a website in German. <laughs> I get hungry. <laughs> uh, I live in America, <laughs> barely speak English. True, same. Um, I feel like it's something that's so overlooked by so many companies in Germany that like, they they don't even consider the idea that somebody could be living here who doesn't speak German. Like all customer support people, all websites, all apps and stuff, it's all German only. It's like, hey, you know, like Berlin has... Berlin's like 30% expats and immigrants. Like, are you not interested in capitalizing on that? I made up that percentage, by the way. <laughs> Don't they have German as their national language? I mean, yeah, obviously. America doesn't have an official one. Well, yeah. So the thing is, like, I mean, obviously, in Germany, German is the only official language. But um, Germany is part of the European Union, and English is one official language of the European Union. And as a member of the European Union, you have the right to work and live in Germany. But if you work and live in Germany, you need to have access to like government facilities and stuff, right? But they flat out will scream at you for not speaking German in a government office 
They'd be like, sorry, like, mein Deutsch ist nicht sehr gut, sprechen Sie Englisch? Like, Nein, Sie sind in Deutschland, wir sprechen Deutsch. <laughs> It's like, whoa, okay, well, you know, I've just spent the last three years literally paying your salary with my taxes because you work for the government. <laughs> like, you cut me a little bit of slack. Sorry for legally working here and bringing money to your country. Can you tell how much of a rant mood I'm in? Press two fingers. <laughs> Dude, some... I, I'm not even joking, like, you, would, you wouldn't even believe how ridiculous it is here sometimes. Um, like, you will call a company for customer service. And this isn't everyone. Like, there are some companies here which are really good. Like, the health insurance companies usually really good and they all speak English and they're like super helpful it's great but like you know like phone providers and stuff it'll say like press two for English and then somebody answers and they're like hello my name is Daniel and they like start speaking in German and you're like hey sorry is it okay to speak English and they're like nine and that's it <laughs> like, okay bye Like, you even press speak to for English, and they answer, and they're like, no, I don't speak English. What do you think this is? All right, the screws are in. I like it though, lol. It's fun to bitch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. Georgia gets mad at me when I complain about Germany though. Um, it's a toss up here too. You mean if somebody speaks English or not? I guess, like, what, some other, some people are speaking Spanish, or? Okay, I've finally done it, dude. I've swapped all the screws. No, there's one missing. No, there's three missing, okay. Shit. It's okay, I'll figure it out. Um, let's rant a little bit about Logitech. <laughs> This scroll wheel, dude. So the scroll wheel stopped working on this mouse, and then I looked it up online. Everybody's like, "Yeah, you got to stick a little bit of paper into the encoder before you stick the scroll wheel in." I was like, okay, did that, kind of fixed it for a little bit, and then it just, like, went to shit again. So, um, I was, I looked at, like, what else can I do? And then I found out there's, like, aftermarket scroll wheels. So, I was like, all right, bought one of those, put it in, worked a little bit better, and then went to shit again. It's like, okay. Now, I guess I should replace the encoder like the actual thing that the electronic component replace the encoder with a brand new one of the same type somehow got worse <laughs> contact logitech they're like yeah you just need to install the latest firmware like check in logitech g hub what your firmware is and it's like it's already on the latest And they're like, oh, well, um, did you buy it in the last two years? No. Okay, it's out of warranty. Sorry. Uh, 
with QC like that, submarine companies should use them for submersibles. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, okay, center distance, 1.65. Check this out. Solve the problem of clearance. So how much clearance do I have now? 0 0.75, that's pretty good, you know? It's actually higher than the pins, so yeah, good. And now I just need some rubber grip that's at least two millimeters thick. May or may not be a problem. Hopefully not. You know, there is like a, isn't there, a, you know what they need for, they need something like this for cameras. Have you ever seen G GSM Arena? They need, GSM Arena just need to do like all kinds of products. They just do mobile phones. But like if they did cameras, laptops, everything, it would be so good. Because if you're thinking like, mm, do I want, do I want to get a Galaxy uh, S23? Or do I want to get, you click compare, you go, oh, do I want to get a Pixel, Pixel 7? Put them next to each other. You can see the price on Amazon. You can see all the specs and just compare them. It's like perfect. You can see like, okay, this one can record video 4K 30 and 4K 60. Same thing with the Pixel. But the Pixel can do 1080 60. This one can only do 1080 30. Like, it's perfect. They need this shit for cameras. I think there's maybe like a uh, DP review or something. It allows you to compare cameras. Can I compare? Maybe not. Dude, why so many? So the S five two does four K thirty does ten eighty one twenty does four K does it do more sixty? Oh yeah. And then the A sixty four hundred four K thirty ten eighty P one twenty. Okay. Yeah, the other thing to check is like megabits per second. So that's what the bit rate is. So 100 megabits per second is really good quality. 200 megabit. Okay, that's pretty nice. Uh, what about the 4K 60? This is so hard to navigate. 4K 60 at 200 megabits per second. That's pretty good, man. This Lumix camera. Boosted ISO 200K. 
Yeah, it looks cool. What about like, um, oops, does it have clean HDMI? Don't know. Check that it's got clean HDMI output. I would be surprised if a camera didn't have that these days, but uh, it's my number one contender at the moment. Yeah, I think it's a pretty good, good option to be honest. Like I'm only saying that I would stick, I would stay with Sony because I've got lenses and I'm overall pretty happy with how my nine-year-old camera is going. <laughs> uh, I'd probably choose to buy that one over the modular rig I was saving for. Modular rig, like you mean modular synth or modular camera? Okay, so this is the A7, no, I want A7S3. This is the sort of thing I'm looking at getting, but the, the newer version. But yeah, this thing shoots 4K 120 at 280 megabits per second. Chef's kiss. And I think it's 10 bit. Does it not say? Okay, that's pretty bad. Hmm. We need to find a camera comparison website. Modular synth. Okay. I mean, <laughs> you've got lots of synths, right? You you can get by with synths for now, at least. Mirrorless comparison. So you can do this on DP review. I was looking at the make noise tape and micro sound system, but yes, I have more sense than I want. <laughs> yeah, maybe you can make do with the the sense for now and get a camera. What was that Nikon camera? It was like a... The camera is something I've been talking about getting for years and never do. Yeah, camera is pretty handy. Z9, okay. Let's check. So... See the Sony, Sony tend to have the best low light capabilities. That's a, that's an actually something I should have mentioned earlier. Like you can see the Sony ISO sensitivity goes up to 400,000. I mean, this is on a more expensive camera and this is the A7S III. Um, but Sony's generally praised for low light performance. So not, not being noisy when it's dark. Uh, maybe Lumix is good with that too, but um, I think Sony tends to be like top dogs in terms of sensitivity. Um, what else have we got? Uh, 
I've considered just getting an AI app to denoise. Yeah, um, the paid version of of DaVinci Resolve has a pretty good denoiser built in. Um, God, why did they put so many <laughs> different fucking recording modes on this Panasonic camera? But they don't put the color bit right. I don't know, whatever. Too much camera stuff. Um, I need to put in some some rubber grips. Where should I do that? Let's put it in the enclosure top. What kind of shape grips should I do? Just like a rectangles in the corner? What do you think about that? Or should it be like strips? On the Mod Dwarf we did strips. It's a lot of material though. I mean, most people will have it on a... Um, sorry, <laughs> but I want a, I want a camera with a large sensor. Bro, fuck Apple Autocorrect. <laughs> yeah, dude, they're, they're all bad, don't worry, it's not just Apple. Um, yeah, I want a camera with a large sensor as well. What do you reckon about grips, rubber grips on the bottom of devices? If you have one in each corner, like rectangles, um, and I'll keep them out of the way of screw holes, is that enough, do you think? Like if somebody wants to put it on a stand, is it annoying if there's only grips in the corners? Guess it depends what shape the stand is, hey. Like ideally we make this thing roughly the same size as a laptop. So it could fit on a laptop stand. Uh, lots of gear I have uses those shite stick on feet. You mean those little like transparent ones? Um Like these ones, these little <laughs> things, because <laughs> I hate those. Yeah, those ones. Yeah, I think um, probably do something like what's on the bottom of the mod dwarf, but just like squares. Something kind of like what they have on the Ableton push, I guess. Can't really see, but yeah, they have these little square. Oh, there we go, just like squares in the corners. Probably something like that's fine, right? Like if someone's going to put it on a stand. Yeah. I don't know. I think. Um. My mod had adhesive strips. 
uh, I prefer to have them built in. You mean like already attached? Is that what you mean? Um, I just ordered little wood tabletop stands to put some gear on and the rubber feet are perfect. The rubber feet uh, on what are perfect? Have you got a good example of something? Good reference product. Um, I prefer them pre-installed so the rubber feet are symmetrical. Like so they're aligned properly you mean? Or yeah the only reason why we didn't do them pre-installed on the Mod Dwarf is because we wanted to give the people people the option to put the Velcro on there instead of rubber. So we included both and then like you could choose whatever. Uh, Dreadbox Typhoon has circular rubber feet. Two hundred messages. Woo. That's all you, bro. <laughs> Appreciated having the option on the dwarf. Yeah, I mean, we could have just put like, we could have just put the rubber on and included the Velcro in case someone wanted to take off the rubber and put the Velcro instead. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Let's try something like this. What? What are these? Oh, okay. Yeah, I think with this device, um, nobody's going to want Velcro on there because it's not going on a pedal board, obviously. So it can probably be safe to stick the pads on in the beginning. Like one thing that was kind of a problem um, with the Dwarf is that people would open it up and want to start using it straight away without putting the the, the rubber on. And they would put it on a surface which could scratch it, like scratch the bottom of the device. So, yeah, that's not good. You want to prevent that it gets scratched in the first five minutes. OK, 
Okay. Then I just need something to indicate the height of the feet. I'll make two millimeters. I'll call it feet height or feet thickness. Just going to do this to have a center point. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, I'm going to have to wrap this up soon. Let me see if I can quickly add these feet. So it's going to be the enclosure part three. No, four. Wait. I already have enclosure part four and five, so it's six. So there's a copy. Just going to do one of the feet and then I'll move it around. Or, hmm. Maybe I should do it as like a component, like I did with the buttons and the knobs. Probably should.
Okay. I'm just speed speed cutting now. And this should be some kind of rubber. Plastics rubber EPDM ripping right along here. <laughs> uh maybe silicon rubber. Yeah, let's say it's silicon rubber. And yeah, that looks good, I think. Uh, let's chuck these in the assembly. Don't fail on me again, SolidWorks. All right, here we go. Just want to hide all these sketches. This is hiding it for every different part that just got this new sketch added to it. Okay. plane there and the front plane also there let's check if it's aligned looks pretty good copy with mates Screw holes are in the way. Boom. Okay.
Grab the feet. The only problem is that I've got screws underneath them, which is exactly what I said I didn't want to do. Because I think that's evil company bullshit. Um, enclosure top. Okay. Still don't know where to put the screws, but for now I'll put them like this. Or maybe I won't make those equal and I'll put it like this or something. Whatever, I'll just leave them like that for now. Come on. I have a feeling my doorbell is about to ring, so I need to go. But yeah, so screws are out of the way now. Uh, feet are higher than the screws, so they won't scratch on the table. So, cross grip off the list, cross low profile screws off the list. Uh, what are we going to add? You know what? Elk, I think next one I might add um, vase amount. Would vase amount make more sense or like a tripod mount? Vase a slash tripod I don't know let's do it <laughs> what do you reckon vaser or tripod mount oh you can I'll watch <laughs> hell yeah oops This thing's starting to come, around, come along, you know, it's starting to look like something. Just need to figure out the actual HMI layout so I can start figuring out where to put everything. Okay, there's my doorbell. I need to wrap this up. Okay, uh, we'll have a tripod handy and no vase of stuff. All right, we'll figure that out on the next one. I need to go. Thank you so much for watching and Elk, thanks for being here and chatting with me. So always, it's always great. I mean, it's been good as always. See you next stream. All right. Oh my God, I'm getting phone calls. <laughs> uh, for anybody watching, thank you so much for clicking. Um, would really appreciate if you want to follow in any of these places, give the video a like if you liked it and um, tell a friend about it or anything else. Uh, thank you so much and have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.